The original biblical manuscripts were not written in English. Of them, the most popular were the Septuagint, which was written in Greek, Peshitta, which was written in Middle Aramaic, the Textus Receptus, written in Greek, and the Vulgate, which was written in Latin. The Septuagint is a pre-Christian translation of the Hebrew Bible and some related texts into Koine Greek. The Greek manuscripts are called the Codex Vaticanus and Codex Sinaiticus. Fragments are dated around the end of the second century and complete scripts are dated around the fourth century. The King James Version of the Bible was not translated from the Septuagint, but from the Textus Receptus. Why is this important to know? If you research Rome or Romans, you will notice that it is not recorded in the Old Testament at all. But you will find it in the Apocrypha, which was removed out of the 1611 King James Bible. You can also find the word Romans in the book of Daniel of the Septuagint. Were they deliberately trying to hide who the Romans are? In the Septuagint, the book of Daniel 1130 translates the occurrence of Kittim in as Romans. Maccabees 1.1 states that Alexander the Great, the Macedonian, had come from the land of Kittim, or the land of the Romans. Joshua 10.16 and the children of Chittim are the Romim, Romans, who dwell in the valley of Canopia by the river Tiber. There's a reason why the books were removed out of the Bible or not included in the scriptures. The Bible mentions the book of Jasher, yet when you pan through the pages, there's no book of Jasher in the Bible. There were more than a hundred books not included in the Bible, and I wonder why. There is estimated to be about 100 books that have been either removed or not included in the Bible. The Catholics even debated on whether or not to remove the book of Revelation out of the Bible. Lewis Ginsburg, in his book titled Legends of the Jews, writes, They, Esau and Jacob, will never be in the same estate. Esau will vaunt lords, while Jacob will have kings. They, Israel and Rome, are the two nations destined to be hated by all the world one will exceed the other in strength. First, Esau will subjugate the whole world. This is a white man's world. The white man from Europe dominates the whole planet. White men go into any country and kill everybody, take over anything they want. This is a white man's country. It's a white man's world. But in the end, Jacob will rule over all. Legends, Volume 1, page 314. Ginsburg further relates that God will call out to the Messiah, roar at this monster that devours the fat of the nations, that justifies its claims for recognition through being a descendant of Abraham by his grandson Esau, the nation that kept Israel back from the study of the Torah, and tempted them to deeds that are in accord with the wishes of Satan. Legends, Volume 3, page 167. Don Isaac Abarbanel, 1437-1508, a wealthy Jewish statesman and philosopher believed that a tradition existed that many of the early Christians were Edomites. Ernest L. Martin, an author, historian, theologian, and meteorologist, in a book titled The People That History Forgot, claimed that most of the Edomites from Edom and many from Tyre went to the west to Italy and other places where they became Christian. His book says that the Edomites migrated in masses to western regions of the Roman Empire. They became Christian but retained something of their previous practices and influenced early Christianity with their pagan traditions. Esau, like Jacob, was a mighty man of renown in ancient times. He was an explorer and wanderer, as well as a mighty hunter. He and his descendants, the Edomites also, founded or were part of the founding of such ancient world empires as that of Rome, Troy, Tyre, and Carthage, Italy, as well as Spain and the Ottoman Empire. In fact, the Book of Joshua contains the following pertinent information. And the children of Chittim continued their pursuit of Edom, and they smote them with a great slaughter, and Edom became subject to the children of Chittim. And the children of Chittim ruled over Edom, and Edom became under the hand of the children of Chittim, and became one kingdom from that day. And from that time they could no more lift up their heads, and their kingdom became one with the children of Chittim. This is one very important passage and may be the reason why the book of Jasher was not included in the Bible. 
it reveals the history of Esau or Edom and that the children of Chittim are the Romans. Edom became subject to the children of Chittim and they became one kingdom from that day. Edom's kingdom became one with the children of Chittim, the Romans. But it didn't end there. Esau's grandson, Zophar, became great. And all the people of Chittim received him with great honor and they hired him to fight all of their battles. This is Esau running the children of Chittim. The book of Joshua 60 mentions that the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, fled from Egypt, he and his men, and they went away. And he came to Africa, which is Dinhaba, to Angeus, king of Africa. And Angeus received them with great honor, and he made Zepho the captain of his host. Joshua chapter 61, 12. And when Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, saw that Angeus despaired of going forth to battle with the Egyptians, Zepho fled from Angeus, from Africa, and he went and came unto Chittim. And all the people of Chittim received him with great honor, and they hired him to fight their battles all the days. And Zepho became exceedingly rich in those days. Joshua 61, 24. And the children of Chittim saw the valor of Zepho, and the children of Chittim resolved, and they made Zepho king over them, and he became king over them. And whilst he reigned, they went to subdue the children of Tubal, and all the surrounding islands. What surrounding islands are they referring to? Chapter 10 Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshech, and Tyrus. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Riphath, and Togarma, And the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided into their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. The book of Jasher tells you that the children of Chittim saw the valor of Zepho, and they made Zepho king over them, and he subdued the children of Tubal and all the surrounding islands. Who are the children of Tubal? Tubal was one of the sons of Yepheth, or Japheth. Jasher makes it clear that Esau's grandson not only conquered Tubal, but all the surrounding islands of Yepheth, Japheth. He took over their land and totally subdued the sons of Japheth. The book of Joshua 61, And their king Zepho went at their head, and they made war with Tubal and the islands, and they subdued them. But when they returned from the battle, they renewed his government for him, and they built for him a very large palace for his royal habitation and seat, and they made a large throne for him, and Zepho reigned over the whole land of Chittim and over the land of Italia fifty years. There are a few historical indications that need to be taken into account. The children of Edom, or Esau, literally intermarried with the Italians, mixed with them, and they became one people. Thus, Esau also stands identified as the people of Italy. Once the Edomites distorted the true teachings of the early believers, he began to deceive and take on the identity of other people and rewrite history. There is the prophetic statement by the prophet Amos seems to shadow a strong affinity between Tyre and Edom. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Tyrus and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom and remembered not the brotherly covenant. Rabbi Shlomo Yigzaki was quoted saying, Tyre was colonized by Esau. The city of Tyre was colonized by a king with the name of Erythus, meaning King Red who came from an area on the Red Sea, indeed even the Red Sea itself, which included all of what we call the Indian Ocean today and the Persian Gulf too, 
was named after this King Erythus. This King Red, or in Hebrew, Edom, was supposed to be the first to sail rafts on the waters of the Red Sea for trading purposes. The first references to him show him in the Persian Gulf part of the Red Sea. Justin Martyr, however, in his garnering of early Tyrian historical events, Justin Martyr Dialogues with Trypho, said that the original Tyrians came to Tyre from the Assyrian Sea, which many actually feel was the Dead Sea. This, indeed, was the original territory where Edom first resided. But Edom expanded. Trading colonies were established on the Mediterranean coast, in the Red Sea at Aqaba, and on the Persian Gulf. It was reckoned that in early times, even before the time of David, descendants of the Edomites, or a portion of them, moved from their areas south and east of Jerusalem into the northern coastal towns of Sidon, and then to Tyre, where they made their northern capital. The king of Tyrus, which is Tyre, is none other than Satan. Thus, Satan is the king of the Edomites and their father. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Satan is that anointed cherub. He's a cherubim an angelic being. He is full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Who else can it be? This is not a man that is referring to in Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel called him an anointed cherub. He also mentioned that the king of Tyre or Tyrus was where? In Eden. Well, we know that according to the scriptures, the Most High put two angelic beings to block anyone from ever going back into Edom. So if anyone was ever in Edom, the only three big people that the scripture mentions were in Eden was who? Adam, Eve, and Satan. And we know it's not talking about Adam and Eve. So we know that this person that was in Eden, the anointed chair, is none other than who? Satan. Satan is the king of Tyrus or Tyre, the capital of the Edomites. Also notice this, that if you look up the word Tyre or Tyre and Tyrus, you get the same Hebrew word for both, Tesor. Tesor, the same as Tsor, a rock, Tsor, a place in Palestine, Tyre, Tyrus. The worldview of Esau has been passed down as a cultural inheritance throughout history from Edom to the Roman Empire to the Catholic Church to modern Europe and most recently to the United States and its empire. In other words, Western civilization as a whole. Now it's important to note that Edom has covered the earth like dew. Most Christians are completely unaware that Esau or Edom is the founder of their religion Christianity. They continue to teach that Japheth is the white man, which is not completely true. Esau infiltrated, subdued, conquered, and blended with Japheth in his land, and this is where they cease to be a separate people. Edom has been assuming identities, conquering countries for thousands of years, whitewashing and changing history to cover his tracks. Another thing that Esau has been doing is editing scripture. 
He's been adding, taking away, manipulating things, all to control believers. Why do you think the book of Revelation says that if any man adds or take away from this book, that the plagues will be added unto him? The Most High said that for a reason, because he knew that this was going to take place. Now, if this wasn't possible, if this wasn't something that could actually happen, John wouldn't have had to write about it. So it was obviously written because the Most High knew that this was going to take place and that this was something that would be done to manipulate the word. Once Edomites distorted the true teachings of the early believers, he began to deceive and take on the identity of other people and literally rewrite history. History is a pack of lies about events that never happened, told by people who weren't there. George Santayana History is a set of lies agreed upon. Napoleon Bonaparte Most seminaries teach that Esau are the Arabs. And they also teach that the modern Arabs are Ishmael. So which is it? We see that in ancient times, Edom was to be found amongst several ancient peoples, which they blended and assumed their identity. Other sources show Edomite elements in China, as claimed recently by an erudite Chinese scholar, and possibly also Japan. Edom on the whole may well have had a major influence amongst many of the world's populations.